We will also be staffing our other honorable guests present with us tonight here. So asking our guide leaders to please come forward to staff our honorable guests. Our divisional education officer, Ko. And it is with much pleasure that uh, we welcome you here today to the Fiji Girl Guides Association National Camp hosted here in Duvu College. We are especially grateful, um, sir, that uh, from your busy schedule uh, of the parliamentary session, you have chosen to come all the way here to Nandronga uh, to grace this uh, function. It's indeed a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I was thinking probably I might get late uh, because we have, uh, as you know, we have parliament session going on and uh, sometimes it goes a bit late. But uh, I think we were able to, uh, it, was, it was distant this way that I'll be here uh, pretty much probably on time or slightly, slightly delayed. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this uh, short, short speech uh, by thanking all those who made this possible. Uh, particularly uh, our teachers, uh, all our teachers in the school system, uh, our divisional office staff, the parents. These are the people who are very important in terms of ensuring that this event comes to its logical conclusion as well as uh, the intended outcome is delivered. And what we see here today uh, is uh, definitely an evidence of a very successful event a three-day event uh, that uh, was organized for a bigger vision, which I'm going to talk about in a second. So once again, uh, I really uh, very uh, thank you, my sincere thanks to all the teachers, uh, all the organizers, organizers uh, commissioners, and um, the parents in particular uh, who are here, and, uh, and lastly, the host, host um, uh, the school do the principal and head teachers of this the school. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are in custody of educational institutions. The ministry, the uh, school heads, head teachers and principal, the school teachers. This includes now ECE centers, but primary and secondary schools and universities as well to some extent. This is a massive infrastructure which is primarily being established to define the future of this country. It is through this institution that we define the future society of the country, the future state of social and economic affairs of the country. If this infrastructure, if this system, if this school system fails, then the country will fail, the future country will fail, the society will fail, and therefore we can't afford to fail. We who are in custody of the school system, the ECE centers, the primary schools, the secondary schools and universities, we have to ensure that we don't fail in our ultimate mission. Our mission is to create a knowledge-based society. What is a knowledge-based society? A knowledge-based society is one where individuals will make decisions based on reasoning, logic, rational decisions, or have some scientific basis to it. A rise above emotions, a rise above making decisions based on ethnicity, religion, caste, or class. That is what a knowledge-based society is. A society where people understand each other. A society where people 
looks at the total rather than individual or in compartments. A society where people critically think, think outside the box. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in custody of our primary schools, our secondary schools, which is the most receptive ears of children. In this particular stage of their life, they'll pretty much absorb whatever we'll give them. Whatever information we give them, which will transform into knowledge. And that knowledge is to be transformed into wisdom. It is the wisdom, time-tested knowledge, that will determine and decide the nature of society we will have in Fiji. Ladies and gentlemen, these children that we have here, that we see, and around our the country, are the future Fiji. They will define future Fiji. And in that future Fiji, how that future Fiji will be, we, the education leaders in this country, <coughs> the headquarters staff, the divisional staff, district officers, heads of schools, principals and head teachers, school teachers, play a very important and critical role in ensuring that we give them the right information. Often when we talk about education, we have a very narrow view of giving a qualification and, and therefore a ticket to the labor market. We in the ministry have changed the dimension. We don't look education only in terms of getting a ticket to the labor market. We look at holistically about building future Fiji, building a knowledge-based society, a society with a lot of time-tested wisdom, which will develop a society which is understanding, caring, where everyone lives happy or happily. Ladies and gentlemen, today in Parliament, I presented a detailed report on the reforms that we are undertaking in the ministry and through our school system, which is based on three pillars. Pillar one, delivery in our school system. What are we doing in terms of ensuring that our delivery by our teachers is second to none? Pillar two, the content part ensure that we have the right content for delivery. And content matters in terms of the kind of body of knowledge that will impart to children. And third is a learning environment, the quality of infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would go around in rural areas, interior and the maritime zone, you will find glaring disparity between the quality of infrastructure out there compared to well-developed looked after urban schools. It is something that needs to be fixed. And today I assured the parliament that over the next four years time, these things will be fixed and needs to be fixed. Just over 400 schools, just over 400 primary schools, which has eight classes, years one to eight, have less than eight teachers. Most of them having four teachers. How will four teacher teach eight classes. How will one teacher teach two class simultaneously? In those circumstances, quality cannot be guaranteed. Ladies and gentlemen, these things need to be dealt with and taken head on. Today marks a very important occasion, occasion where we want to develop well-rounded citizens in the country. Some weeks before, probably six weeks or seven weeks before, I similarly addressed a gathering of scouts in the Western Division in Lutoka. And it was very enriching to see young people, our children, like what we see here today, gathered to answer some of the basic questions that they have been taking for granted learn some of the things that they have been taking for granted. Coming out in a camping environment, outside from your comfort zone, and learn those things that you have been taking for granted. It's an amazing experience. The whole idea about scouts and girl guides, so brownies, rangers, is to prepare you, prepare you 
for an independent living, prepare you to be a better citizen of the society, of the country. Often we tend to spend most of our time, most of our life within the comforts of our family, immediate family. Everything is done, taken care of, looked after. And suddenly, when we are exposed to the outside world, then we realize how much different it is outside. Ladies and gentlemen, some three weeks ago, I had to uh, drop my daughter in Nindi to undertake pilot studies. First time ever she left home. And then I started to realize that we had to teach her everything, how comfortable she was at home, not having to do anything pretty much. So these kind of activities, these kind of events allows you to pick up those things that you normally take it for granted. As well as those things you get to learn, which you suddenly might confront in a situation which you probably wouldn't have. For example, getting marooned in an island, or getting in a situation where, let's say, get stranded in, in the interior where there's normal, normal living uh, uh, support gear is not there. So, ladies and gentlemen, these events get you to think, get you to question yourself about how fortunate we are, how fortunate we are living in the urban area, relative to those who are living in the rural areas in the interior and maritime zone, who are not subject to the same kind of amenities, utilities, or resources that those urban dwellers do get exposed to. Compare yourself with those unfortunate ones in much, much worse, worse countries, the less developed countries in the African region, some in the Asian region, the war-torn countries, how children are suffering. And these issues, these events allows us to take time or borrow time to reflect on those as well and say that how fortunate we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to again thank the organizers of this um, event, this forum, the Gale Guides uh, uh, camp here, for taking the bold step of getting out of your comfort zone and organizing this event to give these children an exposure to what they would probably wouldn't have got. Often, we tend to become too comfortable at our own standard work environment. And comfort is not good. It makes you complacent. It makes you not ready for the unknown. Ladies and gentlemen, our teachers, parents sacrificing their time, their resources, particularly during this two weeks break, is something that we will always remember at the headquarters. I want to again thank them for organizing this and I want to wish all the uh, children a very bright future and I want to assure you that the education that we are now preparing will develop you into a holistic person, a person who will understand how society functions other than just preparing yourself for the labor market. And I do wish you all a very successful future. And on behalf of our government, the Bani Marama government, we want to uh, assure you that we will ensure that government resources are available to ensure that you go up to the highest level of qualification that you would want to. As you all are aware, our government have uh, freed up education so that you um, can go to primary school or high school or university without having to worry about tuition fees or accommodation. Your bus fare has also been taken care of. And there are other issues that we're looking into so that children's dreams come true. Parents have a dream, children have a dream, and it is the government's responsibility to ensure that those dreams come true. Gone are those days when we were struggling and a lot of bright people, hardworking people, who would have wanted to come to primary school or high school or university, 
They just because of their personal, social and economic circumstances were not able to make it. Those days are gone. Now under this government, everyone's dreams will, be, will, be, uh, will come true as long as they're willing to work hard. Once again, I wish you all the best uh, in this um, uh, camp activity and uh, I look forward to again meeting you um, in events like this um, as you um, graduate out of the primary school, into high school and to university. Thank you, Vinaka and Daniwa. Thank you, our Honorable Camp Chief for tonight, Dr. Reddy. Thank you for your words of encouragement and enlightenment. It is true. It is very true that... Enter alone brought 193 uh, guides and leaders to this camp. The next, according to our observation of all the leaders and the headquarters team, the most organized... <laughs> The next, uh, bravo for this uh, contingent. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Thank you. Then we have another. Tr Bravo, bravo, bravo for Fusi. Team Blue, Team Blue. This year for the National Camp 2015, this President's Trophy goes to the President's Trophy is an overall trophy given and decided by our headquarters team. And it goes again to Western. Can we, can we, re can we request the representatives from the Western Division to come and receive this trophy? We have got reps from Lechoka, Tavua, Singatoka. Can we have a rep each from the Western Division to receive this trophy? I think Western has been, this is the third year in a row. Thank you, Western. Thank you.